a Sharpie that doesn't bleed. Uh, some of these new ones have to wait. You have to wait a couple minutes before they become dry. So you can go with a standard big fat Sharpie or you can go with a what's called a fine tip Sharpie and that works just fine too. Whatever you like, you can even use a pencil. I use graphite sticks. I have all kinds of tools and instruments to draw with. Just remember, erasers don't get rid of mistakes. They help you draw. Paints. Paints are really quite amazing because if this was a Windsor and Newton cobalt blue, you might pay $30 for it. So I go with the Graham paints. They're a very good professional quality. and The price range is quite reasonable. Underneath that is the Cotman which is from Windsor Newton. And Windsor Newton, of course, probably the inventor of tube paints almost, have been around for hundreds of years. Uh, they make a great student grade product that is fairly light fast. Light fast means it won't fade. We're using the Thalo Blue, the Alizarin Crimson, the Azo Yellow. Secondly, I like to tape my pictures. Today I will be taping with blue tape. And when the picture is finished, I pull the tape back this way so it doesn't rip the paper. I will be using a Windsor Newton paper today. Very good quality. I love the way it responds. It's as good as Arches. And uh, you can use Canson paper, which is a little smoother. 140 pound cold press paper. This is a good all round paper, 140 pound cold press professional watercolor paper. We're going to paint today with two brushes, just a, a basically a round brush. It's probably about number six or seven. And a little flat brush. I picked this up for, I think it was $5. Get some attitude, positive, and uh, let's get going and start our project. I always like to leave room around the outside of the picture before starting to draw. We just follow a simple rectangular shape. And we keep looking at our original rough sketch. It guides us. I'm using a big graphite stick and I'm going to switch to a pencil in a moment. But I just want you to see how basic and simple it is to draw with shapes. I do the bottom. Put in the little red berries. Take a look at it for a while. Here's the orange. Adding a few little details, right? If you're looking right at the orange, you'd put it in the middle, but I want to put it on the side. Now I'm going to change pencils and let's take a look at the cloth. Just observe the cloth as it folds. Their shadow areas. We want just a simple shape like a triangle that's going around the orange. Goes out and now we're getting a nice curve coming up to the orange. Now this would not be a good place to stop because it's right in the middle of the orange. Now we have the edge of the candle and the little berry so maybe I'll drop it down right about now, but then I don't think that shape would work well with the, with the vase. I may have called that vase a candle, but it's a vase. It could be a candle. And there's my basic line. That should give us a good starting point for doing the cloth. Let's just put that shape of the cloth right on the picture. And you'll see in the shadow area that the cloth is darker. 
and that's the area that's going to be snuggling around the orange and here we go I'm going to go right over the bottom of the orange refer to our drawing just come out a little bit over the orange down and continue right over to the edge erasers help you draw we'll add the underside of the cloth in front of the little berry and we'll get rid of that pointy end section and we'll go straight over later on we'll add another little fold underneath the bottom of the cloth always good to put in a line and see what it looks like and that might work it might not but that's what erasers are for if we want to get rid of anything later we can simply erase it you can change anything with an eraser. That's what it's for. So now we're looking at the edge of the cloth. We're going to bring it down a little bit farther. Just judging where we're going to put that line. And are we going to just leave it like that? For now, yes. Top. simplified from the original container now we have a good selection of shapes and we have dominance in curved lines with a little bit of conflict with these straight lines and now i've decided to get rid of that little extra line and to straighten out the table so why am i erasing here well i've noticed that the top of my picture is not going to fit my spoons so I'm shortening my container and actually it works out better now I could have all done all this probably in my rough sketch but I decided to show you the procedure how an artist changes their mind and works towards a goal even if they have to adjust a few things. Now you'll see the tape at the top is almost touching the spoon and I'll remove the tape later and uh, get a little extra white room on top. And now I'm thinking, hmm, gotta get this spoon behind the other spoon. There we go. Now we have three spoons. But that spoon's touching the top, which doesn't make the greatest uh, shape for the spoons. There we go. So we fattened up that spoon a little bit. Okay, so now what I've decided here is to add the little window, which eventually will be a mirror, but I won't really know it's going to be a mirror until near the end of the painting. Okay, there's our basic drawing.